welcome to Brazil and its fantastic coastal metropolis Rio de Janeiro for the 2013 World Judo Championships. This enchanting city will be the host for the 2016 Olympic Games as well as the 2014 Soccer World Cup Final. Rio truly is a city of sport. So it's with great excitement that it welcomes the Olympic sport of judo for its flagship event. The venue, the legendary Maracana Zeno, is the sister stadium of the Maracana, where football will crown its world champions next year. For the International Judo Federation, it's a time to reflect upon a whirlwind of positive change over the past few years, but also to plan ways to keep pushing the sport forward. On the eve of the competition, IJF President Mr. Marius Visa threw a spectacular gala to celebrate the evolution of judo and also to induct a number of the sport's heroes into the IJF Hall of Fame. Back to the present and at the draw, all eyes were on the heroes of the future. Second only to the Olympic Games, this event is the one all judo could dream of winning. Inside the stadium, a karaoke had gathered in their droves to enjoy a feast of world-class judo. The best of the best were here from across the globe, all seeking to write their names in the history books by winning world championship glory. And for the Brazilian faithful, there were some real medal prospects, especially amongst the women, where Brazil boasts some of world judo's top superstars. With the collective will of the nation behind them, could they win a gold medal for Brazil? And first up, in the lightest female weight category of under 48 kilograms, was perhaps Brazil's best hope of a gold, world number one, Menezes. She already boasts the mantle of being Brazil's first female Olympic champion. Could she also become their first world champion? Brazilian hopes for Menezes were high, and as she came out for her early contest, the Maracana Zeno Stadium simmered with anticipation. First up for the dynamic young Brazilian was a Kazakh, Bakulev. Switching forwards, Menezes exploited her opponent's reaction by throwing her backwards instead. Wazari. She was through to the next round. There she was more decisive, throwing Rossinu of Belgium with a superb foot sweep, pulling her forwards whilst propping up her ankle to leave her no option but to rotate over on her back. Ippon. Then again she showed quick feet to breeze past Sahin of Turkey and book a place in the semi-finals. With the weight of support from the home crowd behind her, it seemed she was destined to reach the final. But her opponent had other ideas. Monkbat of Mongolia was also looking to make history by becoming Mongolia's first female world champion. She refused to be beaten, taking the fight to Menezes and to the horror of the crowd, gaining a 2 yuko lead. The contest slipped away from Menezes and she was defeated. It would be Monkbat that would progress to the final. Menezes would be relegated to fighting for bronze. Could she recover from a disappointment to win Brazil their first medal of the championships? Oh, the seconds are ticking away. The, well, the Brazilian coach going absolutely mad. Mr. Marius Visa and Loco Mateus looking on. Six seconds left, that's all there is here. This is gonna go into golden score. And now, oh, this has done it! Menezes has thrown her. That was an Uranagi on the bell, literally the last second. And what can you say about that? The Olympic champion has got the bronze medal on the last second of the contest. And she would have wanted more than this, but still, she did it in style. That was brilliant stuff from Menezes. It was opportune judo, and she wins the bronze medal for Brazil. Oh, and, well, Menezes has picked up a friend, or she, well, she's been picked up by a friend. The crowd celebrate, and it's the first medal for Brazil. The other under 48 kilos bronze was won by Van Snick of Belgium when she armlocked Cuba's Laborde. 
Monkbat went on from her victory against Menezes to face off against double and reigning world champion Asami of Japan in the final. Midway through the contest, she caught her in Jujigatami to earn the submission and take the first gold medal of the championships. She also had the honor of being her country's very first female world champion. At under 52 kilograms, there was another Brazilian fighting for gold. World number six Miranda was having the day of her life and looked on great form en route to the final. But her opponent was the formidable Kel Mende, who for the first time in world championship history was flying the flag for Kosovo, thanks to the IJF's recognition of it as a state in 2012. The world number one has been on fire this year, took her form into Rio, easily making the final. After throwing her way to the semis, she defeated her nemesis Hashimoto on penalties to set up a showdown with Miranda. As she waited backstage for the final, the tension on her face was clear. Could she conquer her nerves and win her lifelong battle to be Kosovo's first world champion? All she had to do was stick to the game plan. Could she do it? Or would the home support for Miranda get the better of her? Well, this crowd really up for it. And of course, they're supporting Miranda. Calmende, can she keep her cool? It went so terribly wrong at the Olympics. Good attack there from Miranda. And another one from Miranda. She's going for it. She's got the crowd behind her. And the drop C and Addy there didn't quite get the rotation. Kalmende has got to keep cool. Well, she's been on fire, Kalmende, all year. And this would be the first gold medal for Kosovo if she wins it. And a nice Ouchi there from Miranda. Now, Kalmende's got to come back. She's got to start the attacking. Kalmende only just able to represent Kosovo because Kosovo has been sanctioned by the IJF as a country in its own right. So this would be a first on both accounts for Kosovo and for Kalmende. Kalmende now searching. Uchimata! And it's a score! Oh, and it's Osai Komi! It was a Wazari score. Osai Komi, she's just got a hold of there now for 15 seconds. And she'll be the new world champion. And that was brilliant stuff there from Kelmende. She always threatened with the Uchimata once that arm comes round the back. And it's Wazaria Wazetia Barn. And Kosovo has the first world champion. And the great Bubka there, who's watching with the president of the IJF, watches history being made. And that was brilliant. Goal, Uchimata led into the offside coming. She got the arm round the back, that's what she was looking for. And Miranda couldn't do anything about it. She hops the Uchimata through. She goes directly into the hold down. And she holds down for probably the most important hold down of her life. Well, Kosovo have their first world champion. And Cal Mende is now the heroine of her country. It was a brilliant performance. Her Olympic Games went so wrong. This went so right. And now all the children of Kosovo can try and emulate their superstar world champion. I think everybody at home watching the fighting because it was live on TV in Kosovo. Everybody will be happy. I am the best preacher to the young kids in Kosovo that anything is possible in this world. And when you really want to show your heart, then you just have to believe. Work hard and you will get there. The under 52 kilo bronzes were won by Hashimoto of Japan. And Craig of Germany with the sublime Uchimata. Brazil's representative at under 57 kilograms comes from one of the many projects set up in Rio's numerous shanty towns or favelas. Taking judo's creator Dr. Jigoro Kano's belief that sport is a way to educate and provide a code for life, 
Judo ventures deep into the most impoverished areas in an attempt to get children involved in the sport before they become involved in drugs and crime. Judo in Brazil really is fulfilling Kano's vision. Silva has come from desperate poverty and has fought hard for the right to represent her country on the grand stage. At the Maracano Zeno, she found herself in the semi-finals against top seed Javier. How would she get on? Well, it's Pavia that's got to come back now. She's uh, three Shidos down. She's got to attack. And Silva just got to keep her cool. World silver medalist from the last world. Oh, that's going to be it. Oh, to Gary, change of direction. And she scores a Wazari. And what a technique that was. It was right on the edge. Oh, to Gary. And look how she spins on the axis there of her right leg. So now the second's ticking away. She's going to be through to the final, and she is through to the final. Can she do it? Silver, a brilliant performance against probably the favorite in the category, but she's through. Silver's opponent in the final would be Malloy of the USA. Could she stop her from taking gold? Well, can she do it? Silver coming out, she's going to be wearing white. Martin Malloy of the USA is wearing blue. Martin Malloy, the Olympic bronze medalist from London. But here is Silva and the whole crowd are behind her. Can she become the first world champion for Brazil? So she's got the grip, she's got the end of the sleeve. Martin Malloy can't stay there. It's not a good place to be. And Silva. Oh, it's actually Rosa! Rosari scored and directly into a hole, but Martin Malloy pulls out. She turns out. Watch the miss! Now then, that was a brilliant opportune Rosari there from Rafael Silva. And I can tell you now that the commission are looking at that to see if it's an if on. Let's have a look at it. There's the Ashley Waza, and she rolled onto her back. It's definitely a Rosari, is it? No, they've changed it. It's going to be a And she is the world champion. What a story that is. She is the first female world champion. And she is from the biggest favela in Rio de Janeiro. She came through the special system that they have that creates champions from the poorest areas. She is from the city of God, which is the biggest favela in Rio de Janeiro, and she is in tears, she's in bits, but what an achievement, there's the Ashiwaza, and Marty Malloy went onto her back, it was, well it was a soft hip on, but it was the biggest hip on of her life, and she has created history, this was the moment when Marty Malloy landed on her back, she was just off balance Marty Malloy, it was a real opportune Ashiwaza, and it's Silva it's it's drove her onto her back. And that was a real opportune hip on. And what a time to do it. And she's thinking back to all of the hardships that she's ever had to endure. She's come up the hard way. And she's done it against all the odds. And she is the world champion. Aqui, quem morava na cidade de Deus sempre ia para um lado do, do tráfico, essas coisas. Então, meu pai, ele queria tirar a gente disso, porque a maioria das pessoas que ficavam na rua seguia esse caminho. Então, ele parou comigo e com a minha irmã em casa falou, eu vou colocar vocês para fazer alguma coisa para não, vocês não terem tempo na rua, porque na rua vocês não vão aprender nada. Aí, ele abriu a... Aí eu morava na cidade de Deus, tinha... A associação dos moradores, que era gratuito, o judô, tinha futebol, aí eu escolhi o futebol, só que o futebol não tinha feminino, aí eu brigava bastante, o pessoal me incentivou a ir para uma luta, eu escolhi o judô, aí minha irmã foi para a dança, no dia seguinte eu chamei ela para fazer judô, porque ela não gostou da dança, estou aqui até hoje. Nós sempre nos falamos para os nossos filhos que eles têm o direito de sonhar os sonhos mais altos, e quando você tem alguém como ela, Achieving this medal, one of our kids, one of our athletes, that began all a long, t long time ago, and now she's the best in the world. We will definitely inspire our kids to to desire great achievements 
in the dojo or outside the dojo. The bronze medals at under 57 kilos were won by Badetti of Slovenia and Roper of Germany, who stunned the top seed Pavia with a powerful foot sweep. At under 63 kilograms, Gerby added to the growing diversity of medal distribution in the female weights by becoming Israel's first ever judo world champion. Gerby is a huge thrower and blitzed her way through her elimination contest with some impressive power judo to reach the semi final. There, against Abby of Japan, she had a trick for sleep. After forcing her opponent to her knees, she proceeded to snake her own jacket through to apply a strangle. This surprise attack caught Abby off guard, and she eventually had to submit, but he Gerben through to the final. Her opponent there was Agbeg Nanou of France, who beat her compatriot and reigning world champion Iman in the other semi-final, with a lightning-fast hip throw for Ipa. <laughs> However, Agbeg Nanou clearly hadn't seen the other semi-final, as she also fell into Gerby's trap. After scoring a spectacular Yuko, Gerby went to work on the ground, and was able to once again snake her jacket through to apply the strangle and eventually get the win. A historic moment for Israeli sport and also for judo as the female weight category showcased four goals from four diverse nations. Van Emden of the Netherlands took one of the bronzes up for grabs when she threw Abby with a standing shoulder throw for a wazari. The other bronze medal contest, veteran and man went one better, also thrown with a standing Sienagi, but instead scoring a spectacular hip-hop to win the medal. The under 70 kilograms category saw the final appearance of one of the greatest female judoka of all time, as Frances de Kos looked to end her glittering career in style. It's a career that's seen her win three world championships and which finally saw her become Olympic champion last year in London. However, since the Games, de Kos has lost her edge. Without the motivation to train twice a day, she hasn't won a competition all year and has struggled to adapt her slow but explosive game to the new competitive rules. Her last outing at the World Masters in two men saw her concede numerous penalties as she eventually settled for bronze. Here in Rio, the question on everyone's lips was whether she could refine the form that made her such a powerhouse of world judo. Her opening contests were slow, but she looked to have something of the old Dukos about her as she made the quarterfinals. However, there she came up against the 2009 world champion, Alvira of Colombia, who looked to have her number. After harassing the great de Kos throughout the fight, she eventually scored a Yuko that would give her victory and mean de Kos would not end her career as world champion. She would have to fight it out for bronze. After a glimpse of her natural class in the repechage final against Portela of Brazil, de Kos went on to lose the bronze medal match to Kim of Korea by a Yuko. A massive moment for Kim. But de Kos, a sad ending to such a wonderful career. But she'll nevertheless be remembered as one of the all-time greats. 
The other bronze was won by the favourite for gold, Holly of the Netherlands, when she threw Huang of Korea and clamped on a hold. Carrying an injury coming into the day, her reaction showed just how pleased she was with the bronze medal. Galvanised by her victory over de Kos, Alvia went on to take gold. And she threw Vargas Koch of Germany to Gipa in the final to add Colombia to the ever-growing gold medal table. A fantastic moment for Alvia as she became a double world champion. And an equally fantastic moment for Colombian sport as Alvia's victory will no doubt provide inspiration to Colombian youngsters all over the nation. At under 78 kilograms, the story of diversity continued as incredibly an unseen North Korean soul took gold. The score that did it for her in the final against the Kirk of the Netherlands was a Wazari. That left judo experts dumbfounded as to how North Korea can produce such amazing athletes. But for Seoul, it didn't matter. She was world champion. The defending champion, Chimeo of France, had to settle for bronze, which she secured with a Yuko against Antomarchi of Cuba. Whilst in the other bronze contest, the crowd has something to cheer about once more, as home favourite Agua came up a trumps, throwing reverse of Canada if on with Uchimata to win the match and grace the podium. Rounding off the female weights was Ortiz of Cuba at over 78 kilograms. The reigning Olympic champion became world champion in Rio when she footswept Brazil's Ultima before immobilizing her in a pin on the ground to score Ipon in the final. Her gold medal for Cuba made it seven goals for seven different countries in the female categories, showcasing what a truly diverse sport judo is. But for Ortiz, all that mattered is that she took gold home for Cuba. The final female bronzes were won by Tachimoto of Japan, Lee Marie. And so to the male weights, where under 60 kilograms, the phenomenal Takato was out to win his first world title. Takato is one of the new breed of Japanese fighters. Just 20 years old, he is the future of Japanese judo. And after a catastrophic Olympic Games, Japan needs fresh blood. Unbeaten all year, the question was whether Takato could hold his nerve at such a young age on the biggest stage of them all. And the answer appeared to be yes, as he sailed through the eliminations, unleashing a torrent of different attacks on his opponents, who just didn't know how to deal with his all-out attacking style. In the semi-final, he threw Kim of Korea for two Wazaris, both with noticeably un-Japanese techniques, continuing his trademark of blending traditional fundamentals with the mauling style of judo from other regions of the world. His opponent in the final would be Dashdavar of Mongolia, a dangerous opponent indeed, who also looked good throughout the day en route to the semi-finals. There, he stunned the world number one Papinashvili of Georgia with an amazingly quick Kosotagari on the edge of the contest area that scored Wazari. But his reaction suggested he was content just to be making the final. Tukato, on the other hand, looked as though nothing would stand between him and his first world title. So, as the travelling Japanese fans looked on, he gave everything to try and throw Dash Devar for Ippon. But despite coming close on two occasions, he had to be content with a Shido win. Still, the history books will read the same. Takato, world champion. How many more titles will his future hold? An important goal to re-energize male Japanese judo. Yeah. Uh, uh, ma
嬉しいしか出てこないんですけど、まあでも今日は楽しく試合させてもらえて、すごい良かったです。Korea's Kim recovered from his defeat to Takato to take bronze against Gamba of Mongolia. With the other bronze being won by little known Azerbaijani Safarov. Looking to follow in Takato's footsteps at under 66 kilograms was Ebenuma. The reigning world champion won his first title in Paris two years ago and was out to defend it here, but was also looking to make up for failing to win gold at the Olympic Games last year. His run to the final was spectacular. Like Takato, he has beautiful traditional judo. And like Takato, he also borrows from the styles of other countries. One mouth-watering technique followed another as Ebenuma made it to the semi-finals. There he had to dig deep as he found himself losing with 20 seconds to go. And dig deep he did. Pulling a fabulous Wazari out of the bag that landed him on top in a hole to score it on. Ebenuma was looking on course for gold. However, in the final, disaster struck. His Kazakh opponent, Mukhanov, caught him in an arm lock. But Ebenuma's mind was set. He had to win. So he summoned all his strength and managed to pull his arm back just enough to escape the lock. Still, it looked like the damage may have already been done. Using his final ounce of strength, Ebenuma launched everything into a last-ditch Ouchigari attack. Could he score the Ippon? Yes! Ebenuma had overcome the odds. He was world champion again. A second gold for Japan's men. Japan also clinched one of the bronzes up for grabs when Fukuoka threw Brazil's Chibana for Ippon. Whilst the old fan favourite Zantaraya claimed the other bronze with a trademark Ippon against Palaev of Russia. The under 73 kilogram category saw in action Japan's most exciting young fighter. Ono astounded judo audiences worldwide with his devastating throwing power when he won the Tokyo Grand Slam in December last year. In Rio, he followed suit, taking apart some top-class adversaries with his blindingly fast entry for techniques. Japanese head coach Kosei Inui has a superstar on his hands, one that is fittingly just as exciting as he was when he first burst onto the scene at the turn of the century. Ono was into his first world final. There he would face off against the Olympic bronze medalist and cunning French tactician Legrand. He had also shown off his throwing power throughout the day. But could he use his tactical guile to nullify the seemingly unstoppable attacking power of Ono? Well, Legrand, his uh, game plan has got to be a tactical one here, I would say, because Ono is the most explosive thrower that I've seen in a long, long time. Ono is going to be wearing blue. Legrand of France is in white. Legrand knows that he's got a mountain to climb here. Ono searching for the grip all the time. Legrand just trying to keep that hand back. And Ono just trying to catch with the other hand. Sleeve grip is so important for Ono. And you can see there that uh, Legrand has a game plan. It, well, they're telling him to keep on the move, which he's got to do. But look how cool, calm and collected Ono is. He's searching for something, and it's normally to set up the line so that he can explode in. Now he's got the sleeve. Ah, oh, and it's Uchimata! Oh, and it's an overthrow, Yuko. 
first time he caught the grip and Legrand was trying to prevent it all the time but uh, he searched it down the first time he had it there look at that somersaults on his head and he overthrows him onto his side clearly onto his side for a Yuko scored what a brilliant technique though that was it was opportune as soon as he had the sleeve so now Legrand knows Kalamaru the coach there just looking on he knows what uh, what's going to happen as far as that sleeve grip for Ono. Now he's got the sleeve. It's Uchimata! Wow, that was Hanigoshi. He couldn't quite get the line. The leg went up, and that was the most brilliant Hanigoshi in the final of any World Championships that you'll ever see. That was absolute brilliant. Have a look. He's fight, trying to find the line there for the Uchimata. And Legrand tries to block it. And look at the bent leg there that comes up to help get the uh, lift that he needs to throw him over. And I, Legrand went vertical up into the air. And that was textbook Hanigoshi. And you don't see Hanigoshi performed in the final of the Worlds very often. Have a look at the line. The leg snakes in. Legrand tries to block. The hip tries to block. The leg starts to bend from Ono. Ono just gets the lift. And it's spring hip. That's what it means. And he just takes him cleanly onto his back for the biggest Hanagoshi that you've ever seen. And Ono has the potential of doing some absolutely amazing things. The bronze medals went to two of Ono's early victims. The Belgium's Dirk van Tickel who threw with an unconventional counter-attack for a Wazari. And Dex Elmont of the Netherlands, who overcame the tough Mongolian Senjago by a Wazari and a Yuko. The under 81 kilogram category saw the surprise victory of Francis Young Petrie. In his final against the powerful Georgian Shrikisvili, he came up with a moment of magic. Pushing against his opponent to get a reaction, he turned in the wrong way for a shoulder throw. A technique pioneered by the Koreans, but executed perfectly by Petrie, as his opponent was caught completely off guard to concede a error would be enough to make Petri the world champion. Also making the podium for the French was Schmidt, who won his bronze medal contest with a typical drop Sianagi for Wazari. The podium was completed by Russia's Vorobev, who took the other bronze. The under 90 kilos category went to four, with the top seeds all making the semi-finals. First up, Lepitiliani versus Denisov. Lepitiliani had looked his usual explosive self, whilst Russia's Denisov was as effective as ever. In the semi-final, Lepitiliani broke his Denisov jinx. Having never beaten the Russian, he finally did it. Thrown with two Wazaris that the Russian just couldn't escape from to win the contest and progress to the final. On the other side of the draw, reigning world champion and fan favourite Iliadis was looking hot. A massive Uchimata saw him through to the semi-finals. There he would be up against Gonzalez of Cuba, who was taking apart all comers with his favourite drop shoulder throws. Their semi-final would be a fascinating encounter. With 45 seconds of golden score gone, Gonzalez made his move, dropping underneath his Greek counterpart and changing the direction of the attack at the last moment to land Iliadis on his side for a decisive Yuko that would send him through to the final. Iliadis recovered from the loss to seize the bronze medal at the expense of Sweden's Svabi, who found himself on the wrong side of a massive hip throw. 
Denisov made sure the podium would be made up of the top four as he counted Toth of Hungary in his bronze medal contest. The final between Lipitiliani and Gonzalez was an anti-climax. Despite nearly catching the Georgian during the match, the winning score was a penalty in Gonzalez's favour which made him the top dog in one of judo's most competitive categories. At under 100 kilograms, it was an under 90 kilogram veteran that became world champion. Mamadov of Azerbaijan has only been fighting in the category for a year, yet still took gold. Winning score in his final against Grohl of the Netherlands was a wonderful Wazari from Sorisura Komigoshi. Having been on the international scene for years without ever winning the big one, the world title was richly deserved by Mamadou, who became Azerbaijan's first ever world champion. Bronze medals were won by Kropalik of the Czech Republic, Peters, Germany. And so, to our final category, the over 100 kilograms. Where flying the French flag on his chest was the incredible Renner, who was looking for his sixth world title. At the last World Championships in Paris 2011, Renair won a fifth title, making him the most successful male judoka in World Championship history. In London, he won the only medal to have eluded him, the Olympic gold, meaning he has now won literally everything there is to win. Since then, we've seen a more exciting Renair, who came back at the Paris Grand Slam earlier this year to a rapturous welcome as the Mercy Faithful watched him put on a show of magnificent judo. Renner is a national hero and at just 24 he has the potential to leave a judo legacy that few, if any, will ever be able to emulate. As Renner stepped out to fight in Rio, judo audiences worldwide tuned in to see if there is anyone out there that can beat him. In his eliminations, the answer was a resounding no. The highlight of his route to the final plot being this Osoda Gary against Grayson of Cuba. Lying in wait for Renner in the semi-finals was a Cruisville of Georgia. Could he stop the flying Frenchman? Well, this is a repeat of the European final earlier in the year, and Renner had quite a hard fight then because a crush really really took it to him. Now, can a crush really do it here when it really counts? Rene going for his sixth world title, this to get to the final. That big right arm, so dangerous, but uh, it's the sleeve grip from Rene that causes them real problems. And he's caught the sleeve. Sometimes he goes on to the other sleeve first. Then waits for the other one to come across. Uchimata! Oh, it was Zari straight off. And a crush Billy couldn't stop it. And he's directly into the hold down. And, well, he made that look so easy, Rene. He really did. When you consider that a crush Billy is probably the nearest heavyweight to him, and he just threw him over so simply with that Uchimata. And then he followed it down into the hold. Came up just changed his balance and then came over the other side for Munikatami and held him for the Wazati Ippon. So now, René is through to yet another world final. Akrushvili couldn't recover from his loss to René as he went on to lose the bronze medal against Jabala of Tunisia. 
whilst the other bronze went to Tulsa of Germany in his last individual tournament. Fighting in the final against Renair would be home favourite Silva. The Brazilian can match Renair in stature and his performance throughout the day suggested he might have the skill. Moreover, he would have the whole of the Maracana Zeno behind him. Could Silva and the home crowd snatch victory away from Renair? Renair going for his sixth world title. And he's, well, his dad there in the audience watching him. So proud of him, I'm sure. Rafael Silva, can he stop him? He's had a good run to the final as well. So he's on great form and he's got the whole crowd behind him. And he's going to need more than that with this man. He's going forward. That's a good start. And look at that. Rene straight onto the uh, sleeve. Takes it down. And he also takes Silva's head down as well. So Rene just picking his moment here. This isn't where Rafael Silva needs to be. Because he's just playing into his hands. He needs to get on his bike and needs to get it moving. He's just waiting for the attack. There's the Uchimata, Uchigari! And, well, was that on the Mate? Mate called. I thought it was a good score. Dad shouting. Of course he would be. Nice change of direction there from there. Well, no score was given, so it's still even. And his dad shouting, you've got to go forwards. I'm sure he's going to, he's got the sleeve again. He's already got more world titles than any male has ever got. And this will just take him somewhere else. So just waiting his moment. Sleeve, Osai Gary, And that's it. Osai Komi, Wazari first, and then straight into the hole. Kasagatami doesn't get much more basic than that. And Raphael Silva, well, there's no way he's going to get out of that. The great Teddy Renair wins his sixth world title. And his dad celebrates, his family celebrate. And the crowd, well, they're obviously disappointed, but Teddy Renair is out on his own. There's no one to fight him at the moment in the heavyweight division. He just waited for that. He set it all up with the grip. The sleeve first, then the lapel. Elso de Gary hops it through, gets the Wazari straight into the hold down. Oh, Raphael Silva. The strain on his Wazari. face says it all. And Teddy Renner is going to a different realm. And I think it's going to be very difficult for anyone to follow him. He's only 24 years of age and already six world titles. Where is it going to go from here? How long can he win for? Well, we don't know. Only time will tell. But Teddy Renner is a true superstar, and he is the king of judo. Voilà, je sais que c'est mon sixième titre mondial. It's my sixth world title. And in Rio, where my career really started at the age of 18. Super content parce que voilà, vraiment cette année a été difficile pour moi. Je me sentais super bien. I was in good condition throughout my preparation. la préparation, je cherchais à retravailler mon soto. Et euh, when you look bah, back over the day, quand, quand la, you can la see I won almost all my fights today. Today it went well, but that's also thanks to the new refereeing, well. well. the new the new refereeing rules, which favour those like me who are attacking and, attacking and look for victory without first thinking to defend. The new rules are made for fighters. Well, that's it from a fantastic World Championships in Rio. Cal Mendy made history for Kosovo. She became their first world champion. Gerby had a trick up her sleeve. That allowed her to become a sporting hero in Israel. Alvia's victory showed what a diverse sport judo is. As the female weight saw gold medals shared among seven different countries. Brazil have a new heroine, who came from nothing to conquer the world. Only time will tell just how much power for good her story will have. Takato started off the Japanese comeback. Ebenuma had to dig deep to keep it going. And Ono is simply sensational. 
victory surprised everyone. Whilst Gonzalez was number one when it counted. For Mamadov, it was better late than never. And René is unstoppable. Can anyone beat him? Join us next for the team event to see which nations can come out on top in Rio.